how many of you want to be in television or movies here? Okay, here's your chance. You have one of the most powerful women in television and movies coming here today. She made Vidya Balan hot in Dirty Picture. She made overweight, middle-aged men sexy and bade achhe lagte hain. She made people sit up and notice Imran Hashmi again in Once Upon a Time. Saas or Bahu, love, sex or dhoka. Ekta Kapoor is probably the most powerful and the most watched person in entertainment today. How does she choose her stars? How does she know which film will work or not? How did she go from being a star kid to a star maker, all at the age of 19? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you one of my favorite people, Ekta Kapoor, who will tell you how she keeps it real in a really surreal world. Ekta, the podium is all yours. Come. Some of us are more comfortable behind the screen and extremely awkward in front. But um, it's fun addressing such a young forum. Uh, how's Delhi today? Is it rocking? Delhi wale to mujhe pehle se hi bahut bade achhe lagte hain. So definitely, it's fun for me to be here. I started from my dad's garage, as everyone knows. I was the proverbial fat star kid who ate the whole day and I was the living couch potato. I used to sit on my in my house couch and a massage chair and watch every American show possible. And then my dad said, you know, either you can do two things. You can either get married or get a job. I mean, getting married was a very scary option. Then, as you can see, nothing has changed even now. So uh, I said, I'll go and get a job and I worked somewhere. And then my dad said, would you do something? I'll invest. So I said, I'll, I'll make television. So he got a friend of his to invest in a company. I mean, uh, do a co-production. The friend saw my show and said, this is never going to work. So he backed out. So we were left with a lot of television and no one to buy it. And then I went ahead and said, okay, let's sell it in India. So I think that was my beginning in television. Then I went into films. I thought it was a fun journey because it was something that I never knew what's going to happen next. It was so unpredictable. It was like I, I, I didn't even know who's writing the script, but it was getting written all the way. Um, that's my journey, and the rest of it I'll leave to Kaveh to do a QA. I've got loads of questions for you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We are going to begin with uh, some of the myths about you. What's the worst thing you've ever done to people who work for you? I've heard you've thrown shoes, mobile, what else? You want me to be honest? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've done anything to anyone, but once I did break an editing table. Oh, how did that happen? Uh, I saw a bad episode. It was four in the morning. We were working for like 48 hours and the edit table did break. <laughs> What what uh, makes you choose a star especially? Because there's sometimes when you have auditions, 2,000 people land up, 2,500, you go to small towns, you see, you know, a blur of faces, I'm sure. So how do you choose? See, it's a power of visualization. When you visualize your character, you've almost seen the person before you actually see the person. So if I had to see, like I knew I'm going to get a certain look for, an, for a character that I'm casting. So if... I have to audition thousands of people for it or hundreds. It can happen in the very first phase. But I need to know that because I need to actually first see those billion faces and then say, okay, this is the face I want to take for my show. And I think it's also got to do with the way, um, I mean, you you come across faces. You're always looking around when you're casting for a new show. And sometimes it just happens in a minute. Sometimes it takes months. I remember there was a show once on air and it was a Marathi show. I was switching channels and I saw it and there was a girl right at the back and she was um, your uh, now Shweta Tiwari oh. and I told these guys, they said she's, a do she's just doing a Marathi show on a, re on a regional channel, please find her and that's how she got cast. Okay, but who's your favorite, Ram Kapoor, currently? <laughs> I like Ram because he's uh, like me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. But of course, one thing I have to tell you about Ekta, I think that's what makes her so endearing. She's uh, very real. 
uh, in the sense that she's uh, obsessed about the same things that all of us are, your weight, Big how time. you know. <laughs> and uh, I think that's, that's very endearing, but how do, you, how do you do that? Because I think that's what makes good television, that's what makes good movies. I mean, I would, if I lose base with yeah. my viewer or with the people I'm dealing with daily, I'll never be able to make television. Television is about um, the masses, about real issues, issues that we all deal with day in and day out. So it could be a marriage issue, I may not know it in real life, but you know, you can almost understand these issues because you know people, real people around you. So um, yeah, I think, I, I don't know if I'm real, but I'm definitely wholesome. <laughs> okay, we take your word for it. Uh, also, um, uh, I think the move you made from uh, sort of uh, destroying Indian marriage and, you know, being this uh, person who created this war between, you know, the Saas and Bahu and all these extramarital affairs to now actually exploring uh, romance and uh, uh, middle-aged romance also sometimes. How, how has that journey been? I think I, with every year, uh, uh, I think I matured with the TV audience. I think TV was only two, three years old, cable television, when I got in. So I think we all had to first see things which were peripheral, then actually go deeper, deeper, understand deeper emotions. So I think we, I grew with television. So it really was a journey for me and my viewer. So if anyone tells me, how do you know your viewer? I said, because we watch the same things and we like the same things. And of course, the ratings tell you. The ratings tell you. Ratings tell all of us everything. So every Wednesday when the ratings come in, is it like... Uh, nerve wracking for you? Now it's no longer nerve wracking on Wednesdays. It's Wednesdays and Fridays when the movie releases. So, you know, it's your weekend is packed. <laughs> so, you cannot have a weekend. Right. And uh, some of the movies you've made, I think that's uh, what's interesting. They've been very edgy. Uh, 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 some people have been shocked that you've made these Love, Sex, or Dhoka. I think a lot of people here must have watched that, uh, watched that movie. Uh, how did you choose that? I think Love, Sex or Dhoka came to me because I almost had seen all these various relationships in my office. I mean, I, I think we've seen young people, uh, we've seen how casting happens, you've seen how uh, promiscuity, promiscuity, uh, whatever the word is, <laughs> is no longer a taboo. It's more to do with how popular I am or how uh, happening I am. So, I mean, and sex is no longer something that is hidden under the carpet. So... We were looking out for something which actually gave us this new dimension, the new psyche of urban India as far as sex goes. And I think Love, Sex and Dukha came to us at the right time. We were also launching our new brand called Old. And I said, let me do something that definitely is not expected of me. Right. And you've continued to shock people with Dirty Picture and Ragini MMS. Yes. And you plan to do more of that? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but how do you... I mean, uh, is that uh, when you watch that movie with your parents or when you, you know, watch it with... I don't movies? watch movies with my parents. What do you watch with your parents? Um, I have dinner with my parents at times. <laughs> I don't watch anything with my parents. And an interesting thing about Ekta is also the fact that she lives at home, although she has built uh, a house for herself. Uh, yeah, tell us a little about that. That's very interesting. I actually lived with my parents because I was, um, I tried to move out and then I couldn't handle doing housework, I mean, doing house accounting and everything. So I moved back and I couldn't live alone. I just couldn't live alone. I think it takes a lot of courage to live alone. So I've gone back to my parents' house. And in that sense, I think she's a, she's like a lot of kids because she has trouble waking up. You have to be woken up by your mom every day? Yeah. My mom, uh, my staff, anyone who can wake me up has to wake me up. Of course, a lot of people don't venture there, but that's okay. <laughs> and are you easier with your staff now? Uh, I think I am. I think I'm, I'm an easier person. I think I've changed a lot. I think I had... Uh, Huge issues dealing with success, huge issues dealing with the workload I had. I had huge issues delegating work. I think you grow up. I think I, if you ask me one word to describe my good and bad points in life or the reason to describe it, I would say too much too soon. So I think... Uh, so yeah. at some point, did you sort of lose sight of who you are? Of course. Yeah. I don't think... Yeah, 100%. And then how did you get back in... I think all of us have to lose sight to actually get back because you, the biggest learning curve comes from making mistakes and I think I did that, a lot of it in fact. 
and you also work with a very young staff don't you so you uh, become I, like your like their i think i've become younger I, when i was 25 i felt much older at uh, whatever my age is now i feel much younger because at no point did i feel that so when i was younger i was always doing much like family shows and now i'm doing younger movies also yeah and working with the younger staff gives you the perspective of people in the future secondary television is not conducive for older married people it the kind of work hours required the kind of uh, work required i mean any of us if we were married the married girls have a huge issue because they can't go home at 9 and even if they're not working with me the edit can happen at 4 in the morning and the tape has to be delivered so either if you're working in a news channel or in a production house as far as television goes deliveries editing scripting the uh, amount of work the quantity versus the quality is definitely not really something that you can give you easy timelines so how do you keep it together how do you keep the staff together how do you uh, you know get your youngsters um, motivated i think it's i don't have to live up i i think most of them do it for themselves if you do not give them a success uh, i mean we have enough examples from balaji that have grown up to grown on to being um, either channel heads or production heads or you know uh, writers who have now become producers on their own or actors who are now top stars for them to actually then go out and say i'm not doing this for anyone i'm doing this for myself and all of us would want to work in a way where we feel that working here they feel proud working in balaji at the end of it they all go home knowing that they're not doing substandard work they're not doing work for the sake of just making television everyone is passionate driven everyone knows at the end of it the upside or the the e- eventual outcome will be great so i think that's the way it's going to be and uh, in terms of what what works how do you decide i mean what what strikes you is if anyone gut? tells you that they know what works <laughs> they're lying you can say i have a similar taste to the viewer so if it works for me it works for them that's what i can imagine hope or pray okay um we'll take some questions from the audience uh who okay uh no auditions here okay <laughs> yeah please for that they have to queue up right <laughs> yes please um okay ma'am please identify yourself yeah yeah myself karan and ma'am before i start my question i want to tell you that we all love you and i love you too <laughs> ma'am i'm just telling everyone here in the public because you know i'll tell you after that and you know <laughs> before going to sleep part. even though we don't want we have to hate you no you know because it's a love hate relationship my friend yeah, they always at, work better ma'am because at some point or the other everyone of us have felt the pain of staying apart now you know before my i start my actual question ma'am please don't give this answer ki iske liye aapko serial dekhna padega ya you have to wait for some time so that you know ma'am sach bata do when will ram and priya meet Okay, just for you, for the first time, I'm saying it next Thursday. Okay, yes, that lady in the black, yes. So we finally get to see them together. Wait, I can't wait. Yes, there are a lot of women, specifically uh, housewives. I've been hearing from a lot of my relatives that. they don't after watching a series or a serial like the kapoor series they don't really enjoy them but they hooked to it you know somehow at the end of it they're like aaj fir se wahi dikhaya and it's very irritating it's annoying but then they want to see it again and again and do you think it's a good thing that's happening and you really i mean i also feel that somehow they are degrading the mind of the indian women they have nothing much to they have a lot of free time and they are hooked to the series but somehow i also feel that they are degrading the minds of the indian women do you think you think entertaining yourself is degrading your mind uh such entertaining i personally do feel you i, think I so? don't see all your series but but you think the- you think you know i'll tell you one research that was carried out not by us okay. not by anyone in india but in american uh, association completely they said the first time women took a decision making 
uh, took any decisions at home was after they started watching indian soaps because at one point most of the decisions were made by the men and the house for even home issues and after most of the women saw tulsi parvati women taking decisions as far as the house ba- uh, in the periphery of the house goes they actually took decisions this is a official research and i'll send you some papers if you give me your email id okay the lady in the orange yes uh, hi ekta ji hi. Uh, hi hi ekta there's a question from saas bhi kabhi bahu thi हाँ. हम पांच हाँ. देन टू द डर्टी पिक्चर क्या सुपर कूल है हम यू डेफिनेटली कम अ वेरी लॉन्ग वे सो व्हाट वाज दिस चेंज सास बी सोसी डालिंग द चेंज यू सो लेट इट वाज ऑलवेज देयर I just I just I didn't do movies at that time but I thought films are a personal individualistic experience while uh, family viewing as in television is something that you see with a lot of other people so the communal viewing or the home viewing is completely different in experience when i got a chance i showed you the other side and that's why alt yes that gent sorry okay yes please that lady in the yes that um hello ma'am you started with kyunki saas bhi kabhi bahu thi then you came to uh, bade i started with hum panch okay hum panch kyunki saas bhi kabhi bahu thi then बड़े अच्छे लगते हैं एंड नाउ डर्टी पिक्चर व्हाट व्हाट्स नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज वंस अपॉन अ टाइम टू लव सीक्वल रागनी एम एम एस टू एंड एज फार एज अ लैंडमार्क प्रोग्राम और मूवी गोज फॉर मी इट्स गोइंग टू बी जोधा अकबर व्हिच आई प्लान टू लॉन्च एंड ऑफ द ईयर एपिक लव स्टोरी यस प्लीज a very good evening to you good i wanted evening. to ask you that uh, as television is a little family thing so showing a bit of adult matter in the television screen don't you think it's a little bad like what like we saw in bade acche lagte hain uh, i think there was one case between two mature adults uh, absolutely peripheral and i don't think it was adult content as such it was a natural progression for a show it was one episode in uh, 300 400 episodes and actually now 700 episodes i think that much we could give the couple because a lot of people wanted to see the consummation and one little kiss i don't think is such a big problem i think that much adult we all can handle <laughs> yes the boy in the t-shirt the striped t-shirt yes good evening ma'am ma'am when are we going to have seasons on indian television like uh, we have in us okay. like vampire diaries they have seasons they, here we just have to in the leaves oh seasons i want to put your question to all the channels i have been pushing for seasons for the longest time i promise you the day they start seasons i won't do any more leaps and no five year ten year leaps huh. uh, uh, that boy in the checked uh, shirt yes Uh, you seem to have an obsession with letter k <laughs> what happened with bade acche lagte hain the k obsession went in 2009 where so why was why the change it was a brand name issue it was like i thought it worked and it just worked for me till then when it stopped working i didn't keep it with me and you also stop misspelling your name i never misspell my name i don't know it was like a myth out there <laughs> okay uh, yes the boy in the t-shirt the green t-shirt yes Hello ma'am I'm from nice Sushant nice School of nice Art and Architecture Nice to meet you Yes ma'am same to you and <laughs> How come people never died and kyunki saas bhi kabhi bahu thi Ha ji How come people never died and kyunki saas bhi kabhi bahu thi six generation going on all together How is that possible <laughs> You know I am telling you one thing that's one question I even can't answer is ka koi jawab nahi hai Just in my, I, I was like Bar died on the last episode of Kyunki. You know, we had this belief that the day Bar dies, the show will end. And exactly four episodes later, the show ended. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I had to ask me, please, this question. 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 Please
Yeah, they never go away. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. Uh, you, you said in a speech about uh, that you are a great follower of American television and my question is there's a certain stereotype that is being followed in Indian television at the moment. We are not getting shows like Breaking Bad or Six Feet Under. I think you might know about them. And yeah. what I am expecting is there's a certain, uh, you know, your shows basically or the other ones which we see in television today are targeting women itself and not men or teenagers or some, for someone like us who would rather watch something different, something totally different and something that actually requires a sense of imagination of brain to not know what is going to happen in the next. I already know what is going to happen okay. one month I later in your show. I'll tell you what, uh, television has a big crisis it's facing now which is like what comes first, the egg or the chicken? Which means that till you don't watch TV, there won't be entertainment for you on television. And till we don't make entertainment for you on television, you won't watch TV. So there is this huge question that keeps coming up. Why are, isn't there youth programming for youngsters in television? Because youngsters don't watch TV. They come home, they let the television being their mother's domain or their sister's domain or their bhabi's domain and they go out. And they try to get whatever entertainment they want to get on the computer. On the computer or their iPads. Uh, that is the very reason that people like us who want to make a Breaking Bad in India don't get a chance to make it and you won't get a chance to see it. But you do make shows like Gumra occasionally. Yeah, we, we occasionally do small non-GC programming like Gumra, we've done Gumra, we've done and there is of course two, three more coming on which are young urban shows which are slightly more edgy but we can't do it on mainstream television because of the very reasons I told you. Yeah, that the girl here? Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. My yeah. name is Vidita. Uh, I have not only a question for you, but for everybody who makes a cereal or a soap in India. Why, why are all the stories so predictable? They're almost the same, like the guy who meets a girl. And <laughs> I tell you one thing. I, again, I come back to the same question. Just check out the ratings in the last 10 years of television. It's the same stories that get more ratings than the different ones. Unfortunately for us, it's if you don't watch different television, we can't make different television. It's not in our hands. The day we can, I would love to make programming which is different, but till you don't watch it, I can't make it. One last question to that girl there. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I have a question about your movie, The Dirty Picture. Personally, I loved the movie, yeah. and I have to see it on internet because it was totally cut out on the TV. So yeah, uh, in a country like India where you can go and worship Shivling in the Mandir, people can't watch a woman exposing her cleavage. What, are, what is your stand on that? You tell me my friend, in a country where we show men romancing 10 women, we can't show a woman having three relationships in a exactly. film. Exactly. What is your message to such people? I think we need to relook at the word censor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much all of you. And any more questions, you can line up for auditions, right? <laughs> and thank you guys. It's been a great evening. I haven't seen a more energetic and fun audience. I think it's in you that our country lies, the future of our country lies. Jai Matadi. to Ms. Kapoor here, but we're going to be breaking out of tradition. We're going to get uh, a young delegate who's asked the best questions in this evening, and I hope we have a popular consensus on that. We're going to call upon young Karan, who's posed some uh, very dynamic questions uh, through the day. Karan, can I ask you to come and present a token of appreciation? I hope you all agree with our choice. Thank you, Ms. Kapoor. Thank you, Karan.